All right, guys, so we're back for part two of engine reassembly, and we're getting ready to make some, you know, this will, we'll be making big visual progress now pretty quickly, so I'm pretty excited. This will be fun. Hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have everything buttoned up. The engine will be resealed, and all we've got to do is go ahead and, and throw it on the K-member and shove it back in the car. So the next step for us is going to be to put on the front engine cover and then flip the car or flip the motor upside down and install the um, oil pick up to the windows tray and the oil pan, all that kind of good stuff. So to go ahead and put the front cover on, uh, the only thing that you need to do before you go to slip it on is you need to put 15 millimeters worth of uh, uh, silicone here, or RTV if you will, um, over the gaps here. So this is where the head connects to the main block here, 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 and here. You just need to put some silicone over those joints uh, to help ensure that you know, that's nice and sealed as uh, when we go ahead and put the engine cover on. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and grab the engine cover. And what we're going to do basically is we're just going to slide it right over. It's going to, you know, seal this general area. I've uh, cleaned, you know, this surface to make sure that, it, you know, there's nothing for to cause sealing issues. And then we can go ahead and put the bolts in and start dressing the front of the engine. All right. All right, and depending on what nuts, bolts, and all that kind of stuff you're using, I'm using ARP stuff, so the, the torques are a little different. But if you're using uh, standard bolts, it's going to be 18 foot-pounds uh, in a very, very specific order, basically kind of working your way up and out. Uh, and then if you're using ARP like I am, since this is, you know, utilizing the ARP lube, it's going to be uh, 24 foot-pounds. Oh, yeah, if you're using a, uh, stock stuff, it's 18 foot-pounds. Uh, on all 15 bolts and then an extra 60 degrees. All right, with that done, it is time to rotate the motor uh, so we can go ahead and start installing the oil pan and all that good stuff. All right, guys. So we got the engine flipped upside down and we got uh, the general parts in uh, a, a mock-up. So just, I think I told you guys in a previous video or earlier, but I got the part number for the stud here uh, to use with a pickup tube of this type. If you order a GT350 main stud kit, you won't get the extended stud that it takes to to add on this coupler here. Uh, you'll get one that you know is only this height, so you won't have any way to connect it. The kits come with, uh, whether you buy the FP350S kit, of course I don't have one handy with me, but whether you buy the FP350S kit or the GT500 kit, it'll come with a, a bolt like this. This isn't the right one, it's bigger, but essentially it's like this where it's got a nut and then an extended thread on top of it. Uh, if you're looking to use ARP studs, like I said, and you buy the GT350 kit or the Voodoo kit specifically, it does not come with that. Uh, so I don't know if the the 50 kit fits and the only difference is it has that part. I can't tell you that, unfortunately. But I can tell you if you don't have that, if you have the GT350 kit or you're ordering that kit and you want this, I'll put the part numbers in the... Um, in the description of this video, but you can order those separately from ARP. I think I spent 20 bucks to get them delivered. It was a really good deal. So I got everything here mocked up, and before we go ahead and bolt this stuff down, um, the first thing I want to do is I actually want to check to see how our height is. So um, obviously this is not the exact setup as it would be on a GT500, considering this is a flat plane and a couple other things like that. So we want to go ahead and verify that A, you know, the, the crank rotates fine, no issues there, and B, that I don't foresee anything, but you never know, and then B, that we want to measure the, the total height of the pickup tube and then compare it to the depth of the oil pan there to make sure that we're not either too low or too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Sorry. And to compare measurements, gonna place something flat uh, here on the, the, the top of the oil pick or bo 
bottom, depending on how you look at it, and then throw a tape up against it. Uh, I know it's probably not super clear to you, but that's coming in right about um, 6 and 15 sixteenths. Okay, and then down here on the oil pan, doing the same thing, taking that piece of, that piece of flat, and we're seeing um, 7 and roughly one eighth. So that means we have about th uh, three sixteenths of an inch clearance. All right, so as you saw, we had about three sixteenths of an inch between those two measurements. And when you add in the uh, windage tray, that adds about an eighth of an inch. We were, were just barely over a quarter inch of clearance between the, uh, the pickup and the uh, oil pan, which I wanted a little bit more. That's right at the bottom of where you want your clearance. Uh, so I wanted a little bit more. So I took my um, uh, my little coupler nut and I took about an eighth of an inch off of it. Uh, I didn't even have to modify the threads because there's a countersink there, which I don't need for this top part because uh, there's a piece of, you know, there's essentially the, the pickup tube here is, you know, flat stock there. So it essentially works like a, uh, a washer. So I didn't need to worry about the, the countersink there. So I was able to take about an eighth of an inch off of that and we're perfect now, you know, we're a little over, or we're right under three eighths is what I just measured with everything compressed, which is, you know, perfect for me. So I'm right about three eighths, I should say. So I'm happy with that. So I'm ready to move forward. So what we're gonna do now is uh, lesson learned from last time. The first thing you do is you put the windage tray in because you cannot put the windage tray in after you've uh, put your uh, pickup tube on. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab the windage tray, put that in. Uh, important thing is to keep in mind here is you do need to uh, put silicone or not silicone RTV here on these two joints. If you have your uh, rear main uh, cap, I think is what it's called, seal. Well, there's the rear main seal, but there's like the back um, plate there. I'm drawing a total blank on what it's called. If that's installed, you would also uh, do that, but you can always add, um, uh, with the oil pan on, it's really easy to add your silicone and just do it from the top. I'm not planning to put that on yet because it's really, really hard to work with the uh, the engine stand here with that on. So I'm just gonna do that when I take the engine off the engine stand and put it on the K member. I'll finish it up then. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my RTV here and here, drop the windage tray on, install the um, pickup, and then we'll go ahead and, and bolt everything down. All right, and for torque values, uh, once again, Ford did not provide these, but based on the, the M6 bolt size here and everything else in this motor, uh, 89 inch pounds here for the pickup uh, into the oil pump. And then since this is an ARP bolt and part of the ARP kit, this is 20 foot pounds uh, if it's lubed with the, with the ARP lube. All right, so now we're ready, to we're ready to go ahead and put the oil pan on. Once again, Ford did not provide any uh, torque values for this uh, specific pan that with the kit, but when paired with or the OEM kit and the OEM bolts, they're going to be 89 inch pounds thereabout. Uh, and I put thread locker on, go down to 89 inch pounds. I've never had an issue, so that's my plan. All right, next up is to go ahead and install your uh, camshaft position sensors here. The two gray ones go on the outside. The two black ones go uh, more towards the middle. And then this guy here has the extra sensor over on the uh, driver's side. So after this, we can, oh, and 89 inch pounds on all four bolts. So next up, we're gonna do the, um, uh, we're gonna put some, start putting on some of the accessory drives. So we'll have uh, the tensioner, uh, the belt tensioner, and the alternator. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. All right, 
torque rating, uh, 35 foot pounds for both the nut and the bolt. Okay. Tension. Five foot pounds as well. Next up for us is putting in the water pump. Uh, make sure, obviously, you lubricate the both the O-ring and the opening. If you're, if you're using OEM bolts, it'll be 177 inch pounds, about 24, uh, or about 14 foot pounds plus 20 uh, or 60 degrees of turn. If you're using ARP bolts like me, it's roughly, if I remember correctly, uh, 24 inch or 20, 20 foot pounds with the ARP lube. All right, so uh, next up is putting on the harmonic balancer here. Um, want to lubricate the seal here with some oil, and then you'll want to put RTV in the keyway here for the harmonic balancer. This just helps hold it in uh, and make sure you know you don't have issues with it coming back out. And just go ahead and put it on. All right, so we are uh, we we are getting really really close now. So, uh, what's left? Put the valve covers on. Uh, put the 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 neck here for the uh, water uh, thermostat on. But I'm probably gonna wait till I start doing some actual uh, uh, coolant fittings and stuff like that. And then obviously we have the couple things on the back here. Like for me, I have the. All right, so. Typical, the camera ended up going, dying on me uh, while I was tightening things down, but essentially the harmonic balancer bolt is 115 foot-pounds if you're dealing with the ARP uh, bolt. All right, so camera ended up dying me on that one, but um, I was just torquing down the harmonic balancer bolt, and if it's an ARP bolt like mine, it's 115 foot-pounds. Uh, if you're dealing with the OEM bolt, you tighten it down to 103 foot-pounds, back it off, uh, then retighten it down to 96 foot pounds and then do an additional 90 degrees. All right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and put the serpentine belt on. Before you put on your valve covers, you do want to make sure to apply the RTV. Uh, once again, there's going to be a little dab of RTV here where you have the joint between the front engine cover and the head. So a little bit of RTV there and there and then same on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and RTV one side, grab a valve cover and put it on. Dun da da da! I'm probably going to be the only one that's excited about this, but I think these look so cool. They're uh, on the engine uh, with it out of the car, meh, because you know it's silver and there's a bunch of different color silvers and stuff like that. But I think in the car when you have the the uh, paint and the engine bay and all that kind of stuff around, I think these are going to look so cool. I'm really, really excited. The other thing I'm excited about is this is the GT500 uh, dipstick tube, which is so much uh, more user friendly. Uh, it does fit with the GT500 uh, uh, oil pan, obviously, but it does not fit like at all with the GT350 uh, oil pan. Reason being is they're different lengths. So obviously this dipstick tube is a different length than this one, but uh, if you get this this tube, sorry, this tube plus um, its dipstick tube is longer than this tube in just the stock one. No, sorry, it's shorter. So this pan seems to be a little bit shorter, 
which means uh, I don't think this will give you accurate readings if you go to put this into just a standard GT350. I have not tried it myself, obviously, and uh, the only way is if I had a GT350 oil pan in front of me, which I do not, so keep that in mind. But at least on the GT500 oil pan, this should be a nice direct fit. Uh, and if you are getting a GT500 oil pan, this is a really good way to go. So I'm super excited. I'll verify and double check, you know, when I go to fill the car up with oil and obviously I'll let, I'll let everybody know if, you know, if I see something different, but, uh, so far so good. I think it looks awesome. All right. So, uh, nearing the last, I'm not entirely sure if this is the last, but definitely going to be nearing the end of it, uh, that we have next is going to be doing the motor mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those and get them mocked up. Uh, they're 41 foot pounds of torque on the motor mount bolts. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this particular video. I know it was a little bit shorter, but honestly, there just wasn't as much to do or not as much heavy lifting to do, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Next up, we're going to go ahead and put the that plate back on the rear of the, of the engine. Then we're going to lift the engine, get it off the stand, put it on the K member, reattach the clutch and the flywheel, all that good stuff, and then put the transmission on, and then we'll go ahead and prep it for... Uh, putting it back into the car. So I'll, I'll make another video that goes through all that um, and you know just to you know walk through a couple of things that I've learned and all that kind of good stuff. All right so I'll catch you later. As always if you have any questions, comments, or uh, recommendations feel free to drop a comment down below. I'm always happy to help learn more all that kind of good stuff. All right guys thanks for watching. Catch you later.